Do not take product if you are hypersensitive. internet welcome back to another episode of the intoxicated podcast there i said it and i didn't sound like a game show host that was a real big challenge for me i hope you guys know that so welcome back to the show here we are coming at you with another episode um if you are new to this podcast this is a podcast where i have friends on And they choose an alcohol, we have some drinks, and we shoot the shit about life. This week, I have my former roommate, Emily, on the podcast. Emily actually moved away from me about three years ago. So Emily and I lived together, and out of nowhere, she decided to move to Japan. Now, this fascinates me because I'm absolutely terrified of moving. I've I've just, I've, I've never seen myself as someone who could just get up and move anywhere by myself, let alone to Japan. So I really wanted to talk to her about that experience, moving there, what that was like, moving over there totally by herself. And another really cool thing about this is that Emily came back with a fiancé. So she is now engaged, and that's really cool and interesting to me, the idea of going somewhere totally new and different and meeting someone. I'm really, really glad I had Emily on the podcast. Her and I have some interesting, some fun roommate stories. Her and I actually made a reaction video uh, a while ago when we lived together. Um, A Game of Thrones reaction video. Um, So it's pretty funny. I will put a link to that. If you guys are Game of Thrones fans, you can check that out. Um, Obviously, spoilers, spoilers, spoilers. And a little bit of an announcement to make here on this episode. Very happy to say that we officially have a website. So we do now have a place that we can put all of the episodes for both channels under one roof. Just one place for you guys to go to get everything. Obviously, um, I would suggest being subscribed on whatever podcasting app you use. That is the easiest way to get all the episodes. But this is a really cool spot for you guys to go and see everything. We also have write-ups about myself and Corey and Evan um, from Intoxicated Reviews. So it's really, really fun. I worked really hard on this website. Not a web developer, not a web designer. Learned all of it myself, put a lot of time into it. So I'm very, very happy to see it now be official. So www.intoxicatedpodcast.com will bring you to our website. And right now we're waiting for the domain to transfer over. But if you do type that in, it will take you to the website. Eventually it will be officially under that domain. For now, I'm transferring traffic to a free domain that we have. But regardless, www.intoxicatedpodcast is where you want to go. And as per usual... Nice little plug for the other channel, Intoxicated Reviews, which is all about TV and movies. We have another date night episode from Corey and Jen um, with the movie The Big Sick. So go check that out. It's a nice little spoiler-free review. And it's going to be a nice little series they got going on over there, those two. So expect more to come from that. Speaking of date nights, we actually have a contest going on right now. If you head on over to our Facebook or our Instagram page, that's at Intoxicated Podcast... We have a contest where we're giving away a pair of tickets to Cineplex Theaters. That's, I mean, if you're not in the Maritimes, let me know and we'll send you something. (laughs) But um, really what it is, is we do want more reviews on iTunes. So if you want to leave us a review, for the next 10 people who leave us an iTunes review, we will enter you into this draw. Um, On iTunes, you do have to enter like a nickname to leave the review. So just to make sure we don't miss you, because reviews don't always show up right away, they can take up to two to four weeks sometimes to even show up on our end. We do want to make sure we get you entered. So take a screenshot of your review and either comment on the Facebook post or direct message us on Instagram and we will make sure you're entered in. And once we hit 10, we will draw a name and send you those tickets. No one's going to go with me, so I figure, why not give them away? And that's about it, guys. As always, social media, do it up. Um, 
We're always posting stuff. Um, we love interacting with you guys. So make sure you're following us on Facebook and Instagram. That's Intoxicated Podcast. Twitter is in underscore intoxicated. And you can also shoot us an email at intoxicatedpodcast at gmail.com. And check out the website at www.intoxicatedpodcast.com. That's about it, guys. Enjoy this episode with Emily. Welcome back, everyone, to the Intoxicated Podcast. I I hate saying that. I always feel like a, <laughs> like a game show in there. It's the Intoxicated Podcast. Yeah. Guys, we're here with Emily. You want to go by Emily? You don't want a fake name? What? <laughs> <It's> a <laughs> fake some, name? Some people have used fake names. Oh, okay. But you yeah. know, you're good. I'm, I'm, I'm Emily. Yeah. She's Emily. I'm Emily. This is Emily. Yeah. Emily is my former roommate. Yeah, yes. we live together. Yeah. For well, a year. I mean, yeah. you're my friend as well. Yes. But we lived together. We cohabitated. Yeah. We did. For a, quite a while. Yeah, one one year. Was it a solid? I thought it was more than that. But maybe, no. maybe I'm wrong. No, I think it was, yeah, one year. One, one solid year. year. One solid yeah. year. So, yeah. So, Emily is here. She is visiting because she moved to Japan on me. <laughs> On moved, everybody. Moved away from me. <laughs> from <laughs> <And> everybody. <laughs> you've been in Japan for three, three years. years now. And she's visiting, yeah. so she's here in the podcast. And we'll start off, as we always do, with what we're drinking. So can you describe what this is? So the name is called Umeshu in Japanese, and this is a plum wine. Plum wine. Very and sweet. Very pretty. Mm. And it's like in a blue bottle. With like pretty flowers and Japanese symbols on it, mm. it is gorgeous. So we are going to pour some of that right now. Mm-hmm. I chilled it a little bit. Oh, that's it's good. Kind of like a sparkly wine. Mm. It looks like yeah, fizzier than. It's not like a champagne, right? No, 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 no. This is just like it's a wine. It's a wine. Yeah, just plum. It's a wine. Mm. All right. So there we go. So let's give this a taste mm. because this is gonna be interesting. Let's do a cheers. 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 Oh my gosh. Yeah, that's really good. Yeah, really smooth. It's very fruity. Mm, but not too sweet. Mm hmm. Yeah. It's not too sweet. Yeah. It is good. Yeah. I usually start with a friendship origin story. So oh. how we became friends. When? I don't even know the exact day. Like, I remember the Halloween, you were Catwoman. Yes. I remember that. Mm-hmm. I think that's where we, definitely where we first probably, yeah. like, met. But I think we... I think we met at Jesse's old place on Oxford. Mm-hmm. There was parties there. I think I saw you, but I never, I don't think I talked to you until the night you were Catwoman. Right. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. I was Catwoman. Um, I was with a guy at the time. And that's who we met. But I'm trying to remember, like, when the closeness happened. I, I'm thinking it was the girls' night with yes. Carrie and Amy. That was definitely a good... Whatever ice was left, it broke it. So, yeah. Yeah. It was that was that was probably it. Um but yeah, we we instantly got along. And I think it was kind of one of those things. And I don't know if you agree with me or not. Mm. I didn't expect to get along good with you. Yeah, me neither. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna be honest here. <laughs> gonna be honest here. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah, because you're I, totally like outgoing, bright colors, <laughs> like and just flashy, and I'm uh-huh. just like dark colors just gonna sit here yeah. i think our personalities are very opposite yeah but that actually made for kind of a cool roommate situation mm. because we ended up living together i think it was essentially like i was moving out of my three bedroom same here we had both mentioned it and then you were like well why don't we live together mm. it was kind of like yeah this is good timing yeah. i know you you're not a stranger yeah and I know it's what to way better. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And then we were roommates, and yeah. it was super duper fun. Yeah. I don't think we ever fought. Did we no. ever fight? No. We might have had tense moments, but I don't think there was yeah. ever a roommate yeah, no. fight. It Definitely was, not. It worked pretty, pretty yeah. freaking good. Yeah. I think because we kind of even each other up, out in a way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, Definitely. I can be more chill with you. Yeah. And... Um, it's not really a thing. And, all and I can amp you up. Exactly. Be a little bit more girly. And mm-hmm. <laughs> I think. Yeah. Would you say that your girly side came out more with me? Definitely. Yeah, definitely I think so a lot too. More. Yeah, definitely a lot more comfortable with it. That's for sure. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah. Like, you'll put on more mascara. Yeah. Yes. Than you used to. Got some on right now, man. It looks, looks really good. Thanks. Yeah. Even use the little uh, curler. Yeah, tool. The, tor- <laughs> the, the curler tool. The torture device that uh, always freaks people out. Oh. 
I, a lot of people seem scared by it, but really, uh, yeah, once like you get it. used to it, it's all good. It just puts lashes up so they don't get in your eyes. That's pretty handy. It's pretty freaking awesome. Yeah. One thing that I do want to talk about, mm. and I will post a link in the description of this podcast. Okay. Me and you filmed a reaction video to Game of Thrones. Oh, yes, that one. Um, <laughs> we were both fans of Game of Thrones, mm. and we would always watch it together. Mm. And then one, it was one night that it was a big episode coming up, and we knew it was going to be huge, oh, yeah. so we did a reaction video. Yeah. It's like over 4,000 views now. Ooh, I don't even know where it I is at. I remember when it hit 1,000, and we're like, holy. I mean, geez. more people have yeah. watched that video than listened to this podcast. Yeah. Because, I don't know, it was just huge, and it's really, really funny. I have a short version and a long version. Yeah. It's, it was just one of those moments of, like, I'm so glad we did that. Yeah. Because it's such an iconic show, and, like, mm. we have that footage now. Mm. But it was also at the prime of us living together, because at that time, I was about to get Mindy, my cat, that mm. I have now. It was, like, I think a couple weeks before I got her. And I think it was that, it was around May, because I hadn't gone to Mexico yet. Mm. And it was around then, I think... Okay. That you decided that you'd move to Japan. Yes. I could be wrong because we did the Mexico party because you wouldn't oh, be going to Mexico. Yes. Do so you I, remember? Oh yeah. So that would have been my birthday party. Yeah. And then it was in May that I decided to go. So. Yeah. How did this come about? So I wanted to teach abroad, and I actually honestly had my heart set on Norway, but um, while I was doing my certificate for teaching English. Um, I had, I made some new friends in the course and one of them had lived in Japan for 10 years and another had lived in South Korea but visited Japan and they were both telling me, no, Emily, don't go to Norway, don't go to Europe, go to Japan, you'll love it there. Right. Like, and it's like, I had no, no desire to go to Asia at all, but they're like, no, Emily, you would love Japan. And I was like, Okay, okay. So actually, back in high school, I did have a thing for Japan. I actually randomly decided... Oh, what is it? Oh, it was because I had a desktop picture that was actually of a like Buddhist shrine in uh, southern Japan that I had fallen in love with. And then mm. I wanted to like live there. And so I had like started reading Japanese history books and uh, like tried to kind of learn the language on my own a bit, but then got sidetracked by uh, by a German, and so right. that went off the rails. Anyway, so coming back, I was like, yeah, yeah, I did kind of want to go to Japan when I was in high school. 17-year-old me would be all like, yes, Emily. Like, yeah. Gung do it. Do it. So I'm like, all right, screw it. Let's go. Okay. Fine. Yeah. And it's just like, what do you got to lose? You know, worst case, you come back. So try exactly. something you can, else. You can always come back. That's yeah, exactly. Thing. Like, if... Like, not that it's a failure, but if it doesn't work out... It's not the end of the world. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, there's it's always just the other that. side of the world. So. <laughs> it's just a very expensive plane ticket. Yeah, away. yeah. But, like, I had yeah. everything set up so that if, worst case scenario, I needed to come back in an emergency or anything like that, I could do it. So, mm -hmm. it was all set. Right. So, I was like, all right, let's go. So, sure enough, within... So, like, after I got my certificate and within a couple weeks, I was... So, I was looking for a job, found one, got hired, and a month and a half later was in Japan. And <laughs> it was quick, you guys. Like, I remember living with her, and I, I don't... We might have been in a... We might have been month to month. I think... Not yet. It was actually went month to month after I left. Right. So, I think... Yeah, you, but you yeah. paid rent. I for think August. for up until yeah. like for a couple months. Yeah. Until perfect. I found a new roommate. Yeah. Which was great. But like it happened so quick. Like you were just like, yeah, I'm moving to Japan. Yeah. Everyone. And I was just like, what? But <laughs> everyone was. Everyone's like, you're joking. And I'm like, no, no, I'm, I'm actually going to go. Yeah. And it was, yeah, it was crazy. So like everyone was just like, yeah, right. And it wasn't until like I started giving away my shit that everyone was just like, this is oh, real. Wow. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And I think I'll, as friends who are, ugh, I don't want to say the word left behind, but as the friends that are like in your city that you're moving away yeah. from, I feel like there's this thing of like, do you think she'll come back? Yeah. It's, but it's about, like that with any friend who moves away. Yeah. It's yeah, always yeah. just like, we're so happy that you're taking this step. Yeah. We're so happy that you're starting this new yeah. chapter. But like, it's this selfish like, oh, but maybe she'll come back. Yeah, yeah. But it's just because we love you so much. I know. I mean, I it has nothing to do with, you know, anything else. Exactly. I felt that. that way about friends too. And it's like, yeah, maybe they'll come back. And it's like, no. No. But I no. really think because, okay, so let's let's talk about it. So what was the experience like? 
when you first move there. Because that's oh God. scary. Like, Terrifying. the idea <laughs> of moving across an ocean, like, and the 12 hour, is it 12 hours time difference? Something yes. like that? 12 hours time it difference, mm-hmm. and it takes 24 hours to get there. And have you, and you've been, have you ever been on the other side of the ocean before? No, not the Pacific. So I had been in Europe. So I studied right. abroad in Germany for a year. I had visited Europe a couple times. Right. It was fine there. So I was kind of already used to going somewheres and not quite understanding everything. So I was comfortable with that. Mm-hmm. Mind you, with Japan, though, I hadn't studied Japanese um, except for the little blurb in high school. And I didn't know the culture, so it was just kind of a crash course. <laughs> and a shock, I imagine. Oh, yeah, definitely. What was the first shock, would you say, when you get off that plane? Yeah. Like, what was the first thing that you were like, oh, my gosh, I am not in, uh, in Canada anymore? <laughs> like, um, obviously, everything is in J- Japanese, yeah, probably, well, that's like, the first thing. Yeah, I like, mostly this. everything's in Japanese. Like, their forms and a lot of the signs still have English on them. But just looking around and seeing that I was the only blonde person there was definitely, like... Oh, it, yeah. Yeah, it's very homogenous there. So to see another foreigner, it's like, oh, hey, who are you? What are you doing here? What's your purpose? Like, especially in the, in the countryside. But right. in, the, in Tokyo, Osaka, they're everywhere, so... But uh, definitely in the country, it was just like, okay. And so you were, you went to just outside Hiroshima, right? Yeah. So I was like uh, about an hour's drive on this little island in the middle of the Seto Sea um, where there was like one grocery store. <laughs> so, right, right. Yeah, it was super tiny. So um, it was interesting going there. Nobody spoke English there. No, yeah. So it was a bit isolating at the beginning. And um, so I found another job in a bigger city um, so I could find more friends. So that definitely helps a lot. Right. Yeah. And how did you meet people? Like what? Like The bar. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Honestly, yes. the bar. Yeah, yeah. 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 So you just go, um, even if you do like a Google search, like bars in the city, it'll tell you what the foreigner, like which bars the foreigners go to. And then you can easily make friends there. Okay. So like I went to, so I ended up in Takamatsu and there's one bar called Amazon where they all meet. You just go there any night and there's going to be people there. Huh. Yeah. It's called Amazon. So Cool. Yeah. And is it like kind of an environment where you walk in and people come up to you and talk to you right away? Ooh. Or is it more? Or just like you can just approach people um well the thing is the bar itself is really small so you're uh, bumping into people all the time if there's people there oh, okay. so sometimes there's nobody and it's just you and the bartender and he speaks english so you could just talk to him no problem um but yeah otherwise you can see everyone in the bar everyone can see you so um yeah you just kind of talk to people especially the more the more you drink <laughs> so <you're> just, <laughs> what was the yeah. alcohol like like do they have like vodka oh, yeah. and all the same stuff so you just kind of drink yeah. what you, you you didn't try all these crazy new things no, right they, away yeah no they had um a lot of the same drinks if anything there's a different variety of beers there like mm. japan has its own set of beers and whiskeys, oh, okay. but i'm not a huge fan of that so but i would try um like the plum wine for example plum wine's really good yeah, by the way really if so. they had this i mean i imagine that there's something similar to this in canada but it is mm. quite delightful mm. Yes. Especially the plum undertones of it. Yes. Like really good. I feel like a wine kind of like the, the undertones. Mm. I don't know what I'm talking about. Yeah. It's just really good. And it's probably Over, going to... What's the percentage in this? Um, let's see. Let's see. Uh, 5%. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. How much is a standard wine? I don't even know. Um, Depends. If you go to the convenience store, you can get from anywhere of like 0.5 to 9%. Oh, okay. Yeah. Gotcha. <laughs> convenience. I yeah. wish we could do that here. Yeah, so convenience liquor, stores are actually convenience convenient, stores. and they're very cheap. So yeah, very very good place to uh, get a cheap dinner. What drink. about the food? Love so, it. as someone who's super picky, mm-hmm. and I'm just picky in my own city. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> I can't imagine going to like a totally new country, trying to order, trying to find something that you know you like. I have a sense of stomach, though. Like, I, you know, certain things don't mix well with me. You have, like, you can, you're not really bad with that. Like, you have a pretty good stomach. Yeah, yeah. So, did you play it safe at first and kind of go with what you liked? Or did you just kind of say, give me that. Give me that. Let me try that. 
Well, I didn't go to restaurants for like the first six months, except like if my coworker had taken me because right. it was just it was just too much for me. Yeah. But at the grocery store, I definitely tried a lot of different things. The thing is, is like fruits, um, like fruits are pretty expensive there, mm-hmm. so you couldn't get like out of season strawberries without paying like five bucks for eight strawberries like right it's ridiculous so you have to go with what's in season and what is kind of locally grown uh-huh, so okay. which is a bit different than mm-hmm. than here mm-hmm. so but definitely picked up random things didn't know what they were it's like oh this looks good enough and tried it liked it still don't know what half the things I eat are but they're good <laughs> I can't imagine see like I can't imagine that yeah like just like not knowing what you're eating oh yeah I would want like a full list of ingredients for everything I eat good luck with that <laughs> even if you know Japanese good luck with that they don't That's list very, all the ingredients but ja- Japanese food looks so especially like from Japan yeah looks so cute and picturesque and like pretty and, and it looks like that all the time all the like time. especially yeah. like if you go to a restaurant where they show you a picture of the food that's exactly what you get on your plate oh wow they are very very particular about presentation there right so yeah. speaking of foods mm. Emily brought me some candies mm. from Japan so do you want to describe what these are? All I right. just I think you should start with this one. Okay. <laughs> the funny one. All right. So this is called cream colon. Uh, I thought it was hilarious, and um, it's a nice little sweet. It's got some kind of creamy substance and a, a bit of a I don't know how to describe like a bit of a pastry going around it. Okay. So I'll okay. Let you we are going to try that. And then the yeah. other thing is... And the other one here, so I think it's called so Take no Kono Sato. So Take no Kono Sato. Um, and it's basically a mushroom-shaped bread thing that's dipped in chocolate. Not a mushroom, which I originally thought it was. Yeah, no, no, no. It's a bread, pretty thing. And I was like, that's so. different. I'm going to try these on mic so you can get my genuine... Reaction. I'm gonna start with this one because this one scares me the least. Yeah. There's and there's no way to. I just eat it. All right. Just yeah. Chocolate and it looks like a chocolate covered cookie or something. Yeah. Yeah. Mmm. Okay. This tastes like something. Um. Those um Cadbury chocolate fingers. It's like a biscuit with. Chocolate over it. Oh. That's what they taste like. Okay. Mm-hmm. Those are good. All right. So, so far, so good. Those are delicious. Like a chocolate cookie. A cookie with chocolate on it. Mm. Can't go wrong. These. Oh, God. <laughs> what am I about to eat? Okay. It looks like a little log. Um, Like a cookie log with like a cream filling. Yeah, it's kind of butter. Am I about to eat like... Something crazy that I don't know. No, it's delicious. Because the way I'm like, she's yeah. like filling, but she's not being specific. Yeah, yeah, I was kind okay. of giving it. Here we go. Hmm. Like, it's kind of like vanilla. Mm. It's like a vanilla cream. Yeah. Yeah. And like a vanilla. crunchy. Normally I wouldn't chew on Mike, but I'm doing it for the effect, for the effect of the taste. It reminds me of a praline. Mm. That's what it reminds me of. Mm. Mmm, really yeah. good. Yeah, so they also have chocolate ones, but they were sold out when we tried to get them. I mean, so. the name isn't the best. No, it's a terrible name. They could they could work on the name. Yeah, especially Just... with that shape. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the shape. Yeah. I wonder if they did that on purpose or not. Yeah, the, Japan does love poop, so it is possible. Why um, do they love poop? I don't know, they just, they just like poop and there's poop things everywhere like but it's like a cute version of poop. yeah it's a cute version of poop and like the kids are obsessed with poop like, like the poop emoji yeah exactly yeah that's from japan mm-hmm. yeah so but you've been there three years yes and you don't think you'll ever come back right a little you, to visit but i don't no, you're, see myself coming back anytime soon okay so you're no. obviously loving it yes so yeah. what do you love most about it Oh, God, there's so many things. Like, there's, like, a lot of little things. Like, they know how to line up there properly, and they yes. don't cut the line. That's and then, a good point. We yeah. suck over here with our manners. Yeah, it's, it's terrible. There's It's also very, very clean. Like, the streets are clean. There's mm-hmm. no garbage cans anywhere because everyone takes home their garbage and recycles it. 
Really? Yes. Like, the only places you'll find garbage cans are, like, at convenience stores. Hmm. So, yeah. Everyone just takes home their garbage. They don't just throw it on the street. That's a very good, like, way to do it. Yeah. Just everyone takes it home. It's like, bring home your own garbage. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of situation. And recycling is huge there. Yeah. So, everything's really clean. Yeah. Very clean. Everyone's really polite. um, Very helpful. It's also very safe. Yeah. Like, the crime rate there is so low. Like, I've never felt threatened or, like, in danger. Like, even at night walking home alone, I have oh, never yeah. felt, like, like maybe when I first got there, just because I didn't know. But, like, after a while, it's like there's no reason to really? feel afraid. Oh, yeah. I never even really thought of that. Yeah. I yeah. guess the crime rate is really low there. Yeah. And, like, especially in the smaller <clears> cities, <throat> like, you can leave your purse at the bar and, like, go to the toilet. No one's touching it. Like, you can leave your bag somewhere. Like, my brother did get his stolen in Osaka at a concert, but, like, that's the first time I've heard of anyone getting something stolen from them. So. And you've never experienced anything? No, not myself. You've never seen anything crazy bad happen? No, no. It's all just been, like, really good. Is yeah. there, like, a high police presence there? Like, do you notice? Yes and no. So they have what's called a Koban, so, like, a little police station in every community. So there's... Not, like, one big one for a whole city. There's, like, a bunch of little ones everywhere. So, right. um, And they hang out in their little stations, walk around and whatnot. So that's they're very cool. helpful, too. So Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. And people just generally don't commit crimes there, it seems, so much. Like, they just behave and go by the rules. And, like, if Damn. anything, like, if you've got your phone sticking out or, like, I think I left my wallet open one time by accident, like, ah. in my bag, like, behind me, and someone was like, oh, excuse me, you might want to, like, right. close that, and I was just like, oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for letting me know, that's very yeah, nice. Yeah, thank you. Or, <laughs> like, if you drop something, they, they immediately, someone picks it up and gives it to you, so. But one thing you're not a fan of is the underwear situation. Oh, God, yes. Can you rant about that? Just, just get out bras. your rant. Oh, God. Get it okay, out. Okay, so... Like, the underwear, it's all granny panties. I don't understand. <laughs> Unless you go to, like, a lingerie shop, which will just have, like, the 80s-style lacy, like, high-waisted, I don't know what. It, it's all granny panties, and it's just not comfortable. And then they're all, like, $8 each. and So the can't... price and the style is the main. Yeah. Is the main. Because em- yeah. Emily's been back. This is her second visit to Canada since you moved, right? Yes. Yeah. And every time she comes... I'm like, what are you doing? What are you going to the mall for? She's like, I'm buying underwear. <laughs> I'm stocking up and buying like a year or two's worth of underwear yeah. from Lucenza. Yeah. And I've always just, I always just thought that it was just the harder to find there, which is dumb. That's a dumb no. assumption to make. It's just the style yeah. and the, the cost. Yeah. Like. Yeah. I did find one best. shop and I did buy one pair, but that one was like, yeah, eight, eight bucks mm. in one pair but it's nice mm-hmm. and it's the style and everything so i might i might go there again for if i need some more but in the future now. but for now you're just gonna keep stocking up here yeah. in Canada. yeah get and like, them cheap them cheap panties yeah yeah <laughs> love but me licenza so. i love me with licenza <laughs> yeah. how many did you buy this time uh just 14 <laughs> just just 14 that's pairs. a good amount yeah i think last time i bought closer to like 20 or more so but this time I was like, no, no, no. I think I think we'll we'll do fine. Yeah, and so. the more you buy, the cheaper. So you might as well buy. True. If I had bought another a bunch. seven, I think I would have saved a couple dollars. But right. Um. But it don't don't need to. Overdo no need. It, so. What about um? One thing that's really cool is your first apartment. Mm. <laughs> you had to be efficient with your space because it was pretty small, wasn't it? The first one I was into was actually okay. Hey, like decent size, but I did have to share the toilet, which was down the hall, and it was really weird and sketchy, and there oh, was random bad. bugs, and right. I, I was not a fan of that. Yeah. But the second one was definitely really small, so you couldn't have like more than three people without it feeling crowded. Like it's it crazy. Was, yeah. I remember. I remember her showing me pictures and just being like, "Oh wow!" And one thing that you used to do for me all the time. Yeah when we lived together, was make cookies. Mm. And probably wasn't the best situation for baking. Mm. 
in a kitchen that small. Oh, God. <laughs> There's no oven. Like, they don't yeah, have ovens right. that are the same size. So the right. ovens in Japan, if you have one, is the size of a microwave. A big Crazy. microwave. It's like an easy yeah. big oven. Yeah. So I didn't have an oven until my current apartment. Oh. Um, yeah, I only had a microwave oven and a oh, microwave. I didn't oh, okay. Yeah, that's the only. But now you have an oven. Is it small? Yes. Is it a smaller sized? It's, it's like yeah. it's like a big. It's like the big microwave size. Oh, uh, okay. So yes. we. I made a Christmas dinner and we actually Aww. stuffed a chicken in there, but it was like lopsided because it couldn't quite fit in there perfectly. So you would make it. And Emily used to cook for me all the time. We used to have dates yeah. where she would cook a meal. It was so romantic. Galentine's Day. Galentine's Day, but like you were just such a good cook, and her cookies were amazing. Very yummy. Um, and the, you were the first one who really got me into lobster because you made mm. cream lobster sandwiches one night for us. Who hasn't had was, a cream lobster sandwich? Those are like everyone you deserves to have a cream lobster sandwich. You haven't lived until you have. Yeah, they're so good. But that's good. So you're 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 very happy there, obviously. Yes. Yeah. So you were a single gal mm. when you moved there. Yes. Now you are not. Yes. You found love in a humid place, <laughs> as I told her before this. <laughs> like, that's probably going to be the title of the episode because yeah. it's pretty funny. But yeah. I mean, it's you should actually briefly talk about the the temperature over there. Oh god! Yeah. It's apparently humid AF. Oh yes, yeah, so you are sweating balls all, all the, the time. time. Yeah. So it's at so currently it's at least thirty degrees. Day and night, plus like almost 100% humidity, day and night, you just don't stop sweating all the time. Like, just, it's just. I don't feel I would do well with that. I don't do well with that. But (laughs) you make it through. And like, there's actually, so I'm actually wearing one right now. So there's a store called Uniqlo, and they make these clothes called Arizm, and they actually absorb the sweat really oh, well wow. and keeps you cool. Yeah. It's like a certain kind of material that does that? Yeah. I don't know. Neat. It's kind of like the microfiber stuff. Oh, nice. Yeah. So, and that works actually really well for sweat control. But mind you, you're just sweating so much, you know. It just, you just accept that at some point you're like, I'm just going to be sweating. Yeah. This is just how it that's is. That's actually how you know who your true friends are in Japan because mm-hmm. you will still hug despite this being sweaty and gross. Yeah. That's really sweet. You're just like, yeah, I'm I gross. accept your grossness. <laughs> you accept mine. We are buddies. So, yeah. but you were a single gal when you moved over. Mm. Just as a preface. Preface. Yeah. Preface. Yeah. When I lived with Emily, you were very much someone who dated around a lot. Would you say? Mm. You did it around quite a bit. A little bit at the end, actually. So, yeah. like, I did have, like, a consistent boyfriend for the most part. And then at the end, I actually was like, um, so you're moving to Japan, you know, you should, like, start practice dating, you know, to, like, mm-hmm. get used to it. Because I was so nervous, like, meeting people yeah. and strangers. And I'd be shaking, and it was just terrible. Yeah. So, like, I just went on, like, a ton of dates before I left. Like, I even told them, look, I'm moving to Japan, and they didn't mm-hmm. seem to care, but I was like, okay, and just practice dating, because yeah. I was just so scared of people, and it got to a point where it was kind of funny that, like, some of them, I could tell they were more nervous, like, I was just sitting there, and they'd be, like, shaking, and I was like, oh, okay, all right, I think <laughs> I've got it nervous. now. Everyone's nervous. Yeah, everyone's, everyone's, everyone's in the same boat. Exactly, and it got to a point where I was just comfortable being like, hey, what's up, all right, I like this, you like that, all right, are we... Because this is something I wish I could turn back time and live with you now. Because now I'm starting to do the dating thing. Yeah. And it would have been good to have, like, a partner in crime (laughs) that I lived with to do the dating thing with. Yeah. Because you did did a lot of the dating thing. And I was just, like, I just wasn't. It was a world that was so foreign to me. And now I'm experiencing it. Yeah. What was, like, the worst date experience that you had before you moved? God. Because you, you've you had some interesting ones, I Yeah. Think. Were they all, and refresh my memory. Yeah. Were they all from online? Most of them? Yes. Yeah. Any okay. any person I didn't know, it was from online. Online. So, yeah. Between OkCupid and Tinder, those two. Right. Yeah. Right. Good so, old Tinder. Mm, yeah. I think the worst one would have been, oh, this one guy he had, like, his profile picture was great. Like, he looked, 
Like he was like a little like a he was like a little sturdy looking, which is fine. And he had like long hair, t- tattoos or whatever. He said he was five <clears throat> eleven. It's like okay, we had a lot of the same interests. Anyway, so I go to meet up with him, and I hardly recognized him to start. But then uh, he spotted me and waved, and I was like, "Oh shit!" This is the guy. He did look totally different. Oh yeah. So oh, he man. said he was five eleven. He was actually five four. <sighs> He, his profile picture, I think, was, like, three years old or something, and so oh he had gained a lot of weight. Like, I got nothing against if you have more no. weight. Um, but be it's open just and be honest. honest. Like, exactly. Like, why hide it? Like, just show yeah. me so I know what to expect, because that's yeah. what I do on, like, that's what I did on my profiles. Like, this is what I am. This is what I yeah. look like. You have a picture, like, yeah. maybe a selfie of your Up face. And then you have a body shot yeah. that is honest and tells them, yeah. this is what you're getting if you go yeah. out with me. Exactly. And, like, mm-hmm. I had dated other guys that were shorter than me and bigger, and I have no problem because I knew that going in. And right. that was never an issue. But because he lied about something so obvious, it was just yeah. like, what else would you be hiding? That's yeah. Annoying. So like, yeah, he was short. He was a lot bigger. And then also his hair. Someone hacked his hair. And it was like, it Terrible. wasn't even cut. It was <laughs> like he took scissors to it himself and just didn't even look in a mirror. And it was just like. And that would throw you off so hard. Yeah, it was just. It like, would be hard to enjoy yourself after. Yeah, I was. After that, I was kind of anxious and just like I kind of just want to get out of this because this is no, this no. I'm not into this at all. Yeah, like you should have just took a picture yesterday and put it up there, and I would have been yeah. like, oh, okay, I know what to look for. I know what I know what's coming. You know. So. Oh my god, it's so important to be honest. Yeah, on that. I don't like, understand don't, why people don't worry aren't about that. You're clearly not five eleven. Like, yeah. <laughs> I'm looking Ugh. like. At you, I love yeah. like. And so many girls like taller guys. It's yeah. such a thing. And I don't, I guess because I'm short, I yeah. don't get it. Yeah. Because even a short guy is either my height or slightly taller. Yeah. <laughs> so it doesn't matter to me. Yeah. Because I'm short, but so many girls' height is like a thing. Yeah. They don't want a shorter guy. Yeah. yeah. But it's like, it seems to be like every single girl mm. is not it. Like, I've never met a girl that was like, I could go for a short guy. I've actually met taller girls that went for short guys. Oh, really? Yeah. But they actually liked it more. Yeah. Hmm. Or I guess that's... Good stuff. It wasn't really, like, an option, or it wasn't something that they really cared about. Right. So it didn't matter. They just went with it if that yeah. was the case. Yeah. That's fair. Like, if, if the person worked for them, it, okay, the heights is just something you're going to have to... Right. Yeah. So here's what I want to know. So when you moved to Japan, yeah. was there... Tinder, Tinder's over there, yes. obviously. So yeah. did you keep up with Tinder? Yeah, so I did use it for a bit. Not a lot of selection, honestly. Um, so <laughs> that was very short-lived. I kind of have like a love-hate relationship with it. Dude, um, I it currently was... have a love-hate relationship with it. Yeah. That's like just... I love it because it's addictive to like swipe through, but I hated it because the it was so – there was not a lot on there, and it no. was just awkward and terrible. So Yeah. Yeah. So you didn't keep up. Are there any apps that are in Japan that are, like, more popular that people go on for online? Yeah, there's a Japanese one. I don't know the name of it, but I know one of my coworkers is or was on it. So. Oh, okay. Did, yeah. did, and you, but you didn't? No. Oh, no, no, no. So did you have uh, lots of dates? When you, like a couple honestly not that many not though. that many <laughs> and did you meet them all online yes yeah. yeah actually there was like a couple people that were suggested through friends oh that's um, nice. yeah so we kind of but the thing is it was through the online because I saw them on the apps or or the website or whatever and it was kind of ask your friend about them and then kind of like almost like poke them online oh, and just see okay. if you get a response and then you do mm. and then it's like okay let's kind of go on a date and uh, you kind of talk about the people you know and how you know them and then get an idea of the person so oh yeah yeah so okay so then that, that leads me to my next thing is okay. is that you are now engaged yes so obviously the dating thing worked out for you so how yeah. did that happen so actually Kay I met through a friend no nothing on line about this one um what Mm. happened was i was moving from takamatsu uh to 
Matsuyama, and Matsuyama is in a different prefecture in Japan. So um, we were having uh, actually two going away parties. The first one was at a dance club, and the second one was at the bar we always went to. So um, my we invited all our friends, and um, one of them asked where I was moving to, and my friend said, oh, she's moving to Matsuyama. And uh, so the other friend said, oh, I've got a friend who lives in the same prefecture. They should, we should introduce them. They can be friends and, right. you know, go from there. And so they were like, okay, and uh, invited him, so invited Kay to uh, the dance club. And the funny thing is Kay was saying he actually wasn't sure if he wanted to go or not. So that was kind of funny. He's like, thank God you did. <laughs> I know so many origin stories of relationships yeah. that are, I don't want to say by chance, yeah. but like stories that are like, their friends made them go. Yeah. Or their friends, like, they weren't really feeling it. Yeah. And then their friends made them go out. Mm. I know so many relationships that have started out of that. Yeah, it almost didn't happen. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. And the funny thing is, is that night, I was actually like, you know what? Screw boys. I don't want to do anything with them tonight. Like, I don't want to, like, I'm just with with my friends and just want to have fun with them. Right. Like, not even, not even going to, like, bat an eye on Eddie. Yeah. So... Uh, yeah. And so, you've always been kind of that way. Yeah. You've never been someone who's, like, always needed a guy or, mm-hmm. you know, like, that's just, that's just you. Yeah, yeah. That's great. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so, uh, they, uh, so Kay came and, uh, my friends and they all introduced us and, like, oh, hey, Emily, here's Kay. Kay, here's Emily. Emily, you're moving to the same prefecture and Kay lives there. You guys should be friends. And we're, like, oh, okay, yeah, you know, just kind of mm-hmm. being, being, um, polite and stuff at first. And, um... Anyway, so yeah, we're at the dance club, so it's kind of difficult to talk and whatnot. So uh, you just kind of go drinking and dancing. Anyway, so it's kind of funny because I actually noticed Kay because he was actually a really good dancer. Oh. So yeah, so I was like, oh. We're going to test that tonight, by the way. <laughs> That's being tested. Yeah, yeah. Going so, to the bar uh, later. Yeah. This is kind of like a pre drinking podcast. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I was like, oh, well, maybe we should go talk to him. He seems kind of interesting. So. Uh, yeah, so went up, talked, started talking to him, dancing, and, you know, sure enough, get a little close and whatnot, and, uh, then later we go, um, so there's two floors to this, uh, dance club, second, the first, I guess the first floor, um, is a bit quieter, so you can, you know, talk and stuff, and that's where, like, coin lockers and things are. So we go down there and we start talking. We get a lot in common, like, a lot of the same things, and we just hit it off right away. Yeah. So, um... Yeah, so afterwards when we're all done, he's going back to his car, and uh, I actually, again, it almost missed again, because I was so drunk, I actually, like, mistyped my phone number oh, in his phone. Oh, no! Yeah. This is, like, from a movie! Yeah! Oh, Anyways, God. Like, worst case, we could have just contacted the friend to get his number, so <gasps> it, it probably would've, we probably would have gotten it fixed out anyways. You'd have got to fall back on it. Yeah. Soon. So, but I, I typed it in wrong and he started calling me and he's like, it's, are you not getting the call? And I was like, oh, I guess not. I don't know why. And anyways, but there's a um, um, messaging app. Is it WhatsApp? No, Line. Oh, okay. Yeah. I've one. heard of WhatsApp. Oh, okay. That's a good one. But. Yeah. No, in Japan, Line is the really popular Line. one. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So. Is it kind of like, does it just use your, if you're on Wi-Fi? It doesn't, it doesn't use your phone number. Um, you actually, to get an account, you need a phone number. Oh, okay. Yeah. But you add people, and that's how you message? Like... Yeah, yeah. Okay. You add people through the app. Right. So, um, cool. Yeah. Fine. So, added him on there, and then we were good. We talked um, every day for, like, the next week, and then it's like, hey, well, let's go on a date, you know? Um, and so, the next weekend was our last goodbye party at the bar, and before then, we had our first date. At a uh, restaurant, so oh, yeah. It's not, so, did you just go to eat, or did you do anything else? Um, like, did you like? Was it just dinner, or like? Did yeah, you, just oh, dinner, okay. and then that's after what I meant. Dinner, <laughs> yeah, sorry. no, no, no. I was like, was what? There else? <laughs> well, there was the party, so yeah, yeah we yeah. went to the bar, went to the party, did karaoke and whatnot, and uh, from there, yeah, we were golden. So, and karaoke is happening tonight, but karaoke is huge, obviously, in Japan. Oh, yes. I always get random Snapchats from Emily. Yeah. Out at these crazy karaoke. <laughs> that's one thing. If I ever go, that's yeah. what I would, I would look forward to. That, that we would definitely be doing that. Hell yeah. It's you so can't much fun. not do karaoke. You might be disappointed now coming to Fickle Frogs. 
Oh no, I know, <laughs> I know. No, but the thing is, I remember Fickle Frog. I remember. Yeah, that's yeah. true. So if anything, it'll be a shock to Kay just on how <laughs> like different it is. Yeah, just kind of. It, just it kind of feels like you're in someone's living room in a way. Yeah, and then, like the whole paper writing it on a paper. Like in Japan, yeah. they have little tablets that you use to input the songs, and so it's all up to date all the time. And We're like, a little this, further behind. Yeah, this is like you might not have songs that are three years old on there. So. That's very very true. <laughs> yeah, very true. But yeah. so obviously the date went well. Yeah. So how long were you dating before you got? engaged i'm a little fuzzy on the date on that um there wasn't like a huge like big pop at the question kind of thing oh, honestly okay. we were just kind of like we had kind of been talking about it and it wasn't honestly with k he's like the first person i haven't been like repulsed or terrified at the idea of marriage with <gasps> that's so what? i'm <laughs> i was so shocked when i found out because i'm like everybody the emily, was. The emily that i knew anti-marriage anti-children anti yeah everything. but i mean yeah. not an, i mean it was just it, it was just something you were quite vocal about yeah when was, when you lived yeah. here before was that you just you, it wasn't your thing it wasn't yeah. for you and that's that yeah but obviously things have so what yeah. what made that shift what was it about this relationship um, that made that shift happen so with Kay, like he is honestly like the nicest person ever like give you his shirt off his back like and whatever else you need take it um and really really funny so we have a lot of funny moments like japan is a very not like strict but a very like everyone's in line everyone right. this is what you're supposed to orderly. do it's very orderly yeah very yeah. orderly and whatnot but Kay will be the one in the store riding on the shopping cart down the aisle in oh, Japan, so <laughs> yeah, so that's maybe like a normal thing to do here, but in Japan, that, not that so is much. not something an adult does. It so. stands out. Yeah, it stands out a lot. So it does stand out. Um, yeah, so just like think like quirky a bit, and like it fits with my personality a lot. So um, yeah, we just get along super, super great. Love traveling. It's like at the same pace in the same wavelength. Right. Um, if that makes sense at all. That you probably weren't used to before. Yeah. Like, yeah, um, I've dated guys before where they want to do something, but they never do it. And they complain and they just never go. Right. You know. And you're just, and Emily is like a go-getter. You yeah. are someone who, if you want to do something, you make it happen. You don't just yeah. sit around and talk about yeah, it. I'll so you need someone who's going to do that. Too. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So so Kay's like that too. So we go at the same pace and like, yeah, we have our days where we just lounge and watch TV all day. But then we have our days right. where we hop on a midnight ferry to the next Aww. island over, get there at 5 a.m., drive to a waterfall, climb yes. that. Like, yes, random yes. stuff like that. So, That's so fun. Yeah. So it's just really a good fit. And that's just yeah. something that you probably never experienced before. And that probably was that what it was that kind of made you think, well, yeah, I'm ready to, to do this. And just su settle down, so to speak. I hate that phrase. It wouldn't, yeah, I wouldn't down. say settle down, but it's just, it. it fits. And there's no, oh, it's hard to describe. Like, it's just, I'm not, yeah, like I'm not repulsed or anything of the thought of like if like I marry being, him yeah I'm not it never crossed my mind I'm stuck with him right because we go at the same pace I'm not stuck whereas in exactly. other people I feel like I would be stuck in the city or I'd be stuck in the situation yeah like I'd be somehow not able to go and do right so so you him, feel like you can totally be yourself and totally be free yeah do what you want because you want the same things you, yeah yeah we that, both yeah we both love the same thing like we both plan like want to live in an apartment because we want to apartment hop like it's yeah. little things like that where it's just this is our pace this is what we like to do it just matches yeah so there was no proposal so to speak it was more of a discussion a decision yeah so than a big formal proposal oh, god, no. i cannot god, no. emily being no. down with that in any way <laughs> no god no so it was like over like a couple months or whatnot like and the fact I think because it, it happened so early because I wasn't, like, against it. Like, mm -hmm. it was just like, yeah, no, this fits. Like, right. this is something I actually can see. 
Yeah. So for me, it's like, yeah, there's no question in my mind. Of course. Yeah. Let's right. get married. So let's do it. Um, the funny thing is, is like the serious question it was asked. Yeah. So the time it was asked seriously, we were actually just kind of like on my bed making out and he just kind of like popped out and was just like, seriously, do you want to get married? And I was just like, yeah, no, <laughs> seriously. Yeah, let's do it. And he's like, oh. okay. And then just, yeah. And that was, that was it. That's awesome. <laughs> so that, but like we had talked about it. So it wasn't like a big surprise or anything like that. And I love your response. Just, yeah. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Duh. Yeah. <no> shit. <laughs> yeah. Of course. So, Yeah. So here's the big question. Yeah. And you don't have to give me specifics, but okay. what does Emily's wedding look like now? Like, obviously, it's something you used to think that you wouldn't do, but now it's happening. So is it going to be more very casual civil ceremony type of situation? Or do you have any cool plans for it? Obviously, I'm going to want to see every single picture you take because <laughs> I course. obviously can't be there unfortunately yeah. yeah but i though what what do you want for that day so it's actually going to be civil so it's because there's so many factors into this so yes um first off i need to get the marriage affidavit from the embassy to say that i'm single and i can marry and then we need to go to the town hall and uh-huh. register that and we need to witnesses so we'll have like my brother and like maybe one of Kay's friends and um to do that and the town halls aren't open on Saturdays, so we need to find out which one is open on which Saturday mm. and which time works for us. Right. So, to actually do the ceremony. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So um, there's a lot of factors into, we don't even know what day it is yet, but we know it's in a month or so. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. And are you going to get a uh, dress? Um, that's a good question. I've been kind of eyeing around, but I might just kind of use, I've got a white dress. I might just put a fancy belt and some flowers on it or something and call it a wedding dress. That's that's you. Yeah, yeah. That is, like, that would be an Emily wedding. Yeah, like, I don't want a dress I'm only going to wear once. Like, I want to, that's a waste of money, so. It kind of is. Yeah. But a lot of brides sell their dresses. You could So they'll they'll buy a fancy dress, spend, drop some cash. Yeah. And then sell it. But I mean, I, I've been to friends' weddings where yeah. I remember asking a friend of mine who got married, how much did you pay for your wedding dress? It's gorgeous. And she yeah. said, $14. And I'm like, yes. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like, that's how you do it. Yeah. Like, you don't have to worry about, like, spend your money on your life. Spend your money on yeah. traveling. Spend your money on a home. Exactly. Like, why spend it on these things that are, like... Yeah, you'll have pictures of it, but, like, yeah. it's, it's one day. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, and, like, another thing is, is, like, he, like, where would we have it, you know? Would we have it in Japan? Would we have it in Canada? And then... Let's do it right now. <laughs> <laughs> On the podcast. No, we can't. We can't. Because no. he, he needs to get, like, a marriage after well, I would have, yeah. Here. Yeah. But, um, yeah, no, uh... So it would be expensive for, like, one family or another. And then it's like, well, why not, like, Hawaii, which is in the middle. But then it's, like, ridiculously expensive for yeah, everybody. everyone involved. Yeah, so considering that, it was just like, okay, it's just easier if we keep this super low-key. Um, yeah. And so then that way people who don't go, they don't feel like they're messing anything crazy. Exactly. They're, you know, like, it's not like a whole day thing. Yeah. That they're missing. Mm. Is your, are your family going to come for it? Oh, no. No? no? no. So it's just, but you're going to... Take some pictures. In the oh, front. yeah, yeah. I have to take pictures. Mom yeah. would kill me if I didn't. Yeah. So, <laughs> she would. But, uh, yeah, but that's what, like, this trip is um, basically our kind of wedding party. Celebration. Tour. Yeah. Visit. So, yeah. Yeah. So, we are going to go out tonight. Mm. It's going to get fun because we're going to karaoke and mm. um, right after this. Yeah. Um, before we close it out, Emily. Yes. Did you want to play some Would You Rather? Have you ever played this? Yes, I have. Okay. Maybe we'll Let's just do, do it. it. We'll do a couple questions and then we'll wrap it up. All right. So I just thought of this for you because I think mm. you would get a kick out of this. This is kind of like, um, would you press the button, which I've played with Amy a bunch of times mm. on this podcast, but okay. this is just would you rather. So one or okay. the other. So would you rather fight a shark with bear arms or fight a bear with shark arms? <laughs> fight a bear with shark arms. Because you know how a shark, like if you touch it one way, it's mm-hmm. smooth. But if you touch mm-hmm. the other way, it cuts you. I would just hit the bear the opposite way and just ah, cut him right off. I'm trying to think. Yeah, I think. Well, actually, I don't know. Well, okay, shark arms. So are the arms like the head of the shark? Is it like an, a bear with like shark heads for arms? Oh, wait. Do I have the shark, shark arms, arms or does the bear have the bear. shark arms? The bear has the shark arms. Oh, wait. Arms. I don't know. 
That's actually a good question. Fight a shark with bare arms. Oh, I guess you have bare arms. Yeah, yeah. that makes more sense. Or yeah. yeah, shark arms. Yeah, shark arms. Sure. But you know what's oddly enough? 56 percent said the other one. Oh, so we're not. What? Yeah, not weird. It's a terrible idea. Shark would just bite your arms off. <laughs> no, right? What are they At least thinking? With the bear, you have like a little Ooh. chance to. Okay, here's one. Would you rather always look eight months pregnant or always have a black eye? Black I eye. Know. Black eye. Concealer. Yeah. <laughs> like, you could hide the belly with, like, big shirts, but I feel like if it's eight months, that's way too big yeah. To, yeah. to really... And people would always... And I'm assuming it's always look eight months pregnant but not actually be pregnant. So, yeah. like, people will always just think you're pregnant. Yeah. All the time. Yeah. I would I would definitely go black eye because you yeah. can you can conceal that shit and yeah. it's it's very easy to do. Yeah. Hide it with hair or something, you know? Ooh. As if you were as a leader, yeah. Would you rather be loved or feared? Loved. Mm-hmm. Really? Yeah. Yeah, I think so too. I kind of think of Big Brother when I think of this question. Yeah. Like if you were to play Big Brother, yeah. are you someone who would be like a villain on the show? Or like would you kind of aim to like win the audience's affection in a way? Mm. I, that's kind of how – when I saw that question, I thought of Big Brother. Because when people go on Big Brother, they always get asked like, would you rather win and be hated or lose and be loved? Mm. Which is kind of an interesting question. Yeah. Because in my mind, I'm like, I really want to be the one who doesn't care and we just want to win. Yeah. But I think I'd still rather be loved. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think I'm too, like, I care too much about Well, I feel think. like with that one, like, if you're a leader, like, if you are feared, if someone's going to want to, like, get you out of power to do a better job You'd for likely the people, be, yeah. yeah. But, like, true. as a leader, if you are loved, then people will support you and you're doing good things. Like, people clearly like what you're doing rather than afraid of consequences of not doing That's what true. you say. So, That's very, very true. Yeah. True that. Would you rather play a game of Quidditch? 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 Yes. Quidditch. Or take a field trip with Miss Fizzle. Frizzle. I can't read. <laughs> Miss Frizzle. That's Magic School Bus, right? Yes. Um, like, I don't... Where are we taking the field trip? Is it to Hogwarts? <laughs> <laughs> then I could do both. It doesn't say... If it's to Hogwarts, Miss Frizzle. I would but. much rather the Miss Frizzle anyways, because I don't like games. I don't like sports. Oh, but it'd be so much fun on a broomstick. Mm. Like, in the air and not pretending you're flying. Yeah. That'd be nice. So uh, you would rather Miss Frizzle on the preference that you're going to Hogwarts. To Hogwarts. That's understandable. And possibly pay, playing Quidditch anyways. Oh, yeah. <laughs> would you rather eat fast food burgers every night or eat Chinese takeout every night? Oh, jeez. Burgers. I love Chinese food, but it's just too MSG, like, too much MSG for me, and I get migraines yeah. from the MSG. Um, and I'm not even a huge burger fan, but I yeah. would still pick burgers over Chinese food. If there's, like, a variety of burgers, like chicken burgers. I can do chicken burgers every day, but I can oh. do hamburgers every day. You're not day. a hamburger per- Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Because for me, I don't like hamburgers at a restaurant. I mm. find them too too much. Yeah. But, like, a McDonald's hamburger? Mm. I can get down with that. Mm. I would eat that every day. Mm. Um, would you rather always speak all your thoughts out loud or never speak at all, not even in sign language? So this is kind of like every thought you have, mm. you'd have to say out loud. Mm-hmm. I feel like I'd do that anyway. <laughs> <laughs> no filter. Yeah. Hardly a filter. Oh, but that could rough. cause a lot of problems, too. Yeah, that's rough. But never speaking at all, not even in sign language. Like, you couldn't even motion to people what yeah. you were what you were trying to communicate. Mm, but how would you – How you'd have to be, like, a hermit for that. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. that's. Could you – oh, yeah. I guess – I would rather speak all my thoughts out loud, for I sure. I don't want to speak all my thoughts out loud. Mm. So, let's yeah. see if I can find out. 68% said all thoughts out loud. 32 said Jeez. never speak at all. Yeah, I think I, I'd go more with never speak. <laughs> oh, this is a good one. Okay. Would you rather every movie you watch uh, replaces the lead role with Nicolas Cage? Okay. So every movie you watch, the lead role is Nic- Nicolas Cage. Okay. Or every song you hear is performed by Nickelback. Nicolas Cage, Yeah, obviously. 100%, right? Yeah. I got nothing against Nick Cage, but that's every lead. Yeah, every, every big role. Song. 
Yeah, every um, song. I, I appreciate my music probably a little more than movies. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm with you yeah. on that. So, let's see the overwhelming percentage. Yeah, 70% Nick Cage. 30%. Who's the 30%? I know, right? Who is that? So, we'll just do one more here. Okay. Would you rather be barefoot for the rest of your life or wear Crocs for the rest of your life? Barefoot. Me too. I hate Crocs. They're so ugly. So ugly. And I hate wearing shoes anyway. Mm. I hate it. I yeah. love being barefoot. Yeah. It's yeah. just much fear. And like in Japan, they wear Crocs all the time. Like all the time? Yeah. Like they're yeah. everywhere. Because they're easy to slip in and out of. Because in Japan, it's a big thing to take your shoes off all the time. In right. Places, so I was, convenient. I told Emily today that I was like, if I ever go to Japan, which I really hope to go to visit yeah. you at some point in my life, I will be over there. Because it's it just feels like... One of my dream places that I want to go. Yeah, yes. Tokyo and all yes, that. Yes, you would do very well. I would do very well. And I feel like every single fashion item that I see on people that I love, I'm like, where did you get that? They're like, oh, it's from Japan. I'm like, mm. god damn, I just want to go shopping there. I just want to go on a big shopping trip there, really. I could order online, I guess. Mm. But uh, one thing you told me was was that oh, it's one of the things with the culture, is the yeah. shoes. Yeah. Shoes off all the time. Yeah. Interesting. Well, I think we'll wrap it up because mm-hmm. we are going to get – on with our evening. Do you have any last words as you as you go on your journey into married life? Oh, oh my God! Don't say that. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, that sounds disgusting. Oh no. Um, I don't know. Like just like I know there's a lot of people out there that are anti-marriage and anti-kid, and I'm not saying that there's someone out there that will change your mind on that, but mm. don't. Like, be open to... Change. To change, yeah. Because, honestly, if, if you would have asked me three years ago... Yeah. If you would have asked me... I would have even, said Emily would yeah. never have gotten married. Yeah. If you would asked me the day before I met Kay, I would have been like, no. <laughs> not <laughs> no, no. Yeah. So, yeah. Not saying that there is someone that will change your mind or anything like that, because I honestly didn't think there was for me, mm-hmm. but it's definitely a possibility um, so just you yeah, just have to open. open. I have to open yeah, up your just, open yourself up for sure. Stuff. Yeah, that's actually like a very good piece of yeah. advice because it's like I, I think a lot of people are way too set in their ways. Yeah, yeah. And they 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 want to promote this like I'm st- I have a strong stance on this and this mm. is my stance and I'm not changing it. But yeah. it's like things are gonna change. You my ex death, never yeah. wants to get married. He's married yeah. now. Yeah, to someone else. Yeah, people change like, and it's okay. It's yeah. okay to change your mind because even my exactly. mother was shocked. Like, yeah. she knew and we had arguments over this. Right. So it's it's something like it's okay to change your mind and it's okay if you don't change your mind on that too. Because so many yeah. of our um, I guess stances on things are based on our experiences. Mm. So obviously at that point that I knew you, yeah, your experiences with men, obviously they weren't good enough because they, yeah. you know, like you weren't seeing that side. Yeah. Now that you've found someone who you're like totally comfortable with, yeah. you can totally be yourself with, things have changed. Mm. That's, that's not a bad thing at all. Yeah. That's a g- I'm happy for you. I'm very you. excited. I'm very <laughs> excited for Emily. I'm very yeah. excited. I yeah. thank you very much for taking time out of your busy. <laughs> this girl's like going city hopping and yeah. just friend to friend, just yeah. so busy. And Trying to see everybody. <laughs> you took the time to do this the show, and I can't thank you enough because I'm so happy I got to have you on. Maybe we'll do another one via Skype sometime. Yeah. You never know. Right. With your brother. That would be really oh, fun. Oh, that would be fun. Yeah. 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 I'd like to get, get him on here. So. Yeah. so thanks so much, and let's do a final little t- last cheer. Right. Thanks for having me. Thanks for being on, and ring that bell. 